Good evening. Today we're going to talk about uh, SQL Server 2016 and Microsoft R Server integration. Um, very hot topic. Um, it has been awaited for quite a long time and first of all I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I have 15 years of experience with SQL Server and data analysis. I am BI developer and data analyst um, and a couple of contacts if you want to contact me. Um, community speaker um, for different SQL surveys like um, SQL Surveys Slovenia coming at the end of December. You are also welcome to come and um, pass events and Microsoft events. Um, and as Mark also introduced me on the Twitter, I am the fixie bike junkie hipster bookworm coffee lover. <laughs> but first of all, um, I am no data scientists. It might be a bit of a surprise, but data scientist by the definition is a statistician who lives in San Francisco. And I come from Slovenia. So, <laughs> um, by the definition, I am not a data scientist. Um, but this was quite an interesting and long debate, who is who. Um, if, if you follow this URL, you can um, read much more about it. And also, this was um, taken from the Twitter. Um, you know, the data scientist is also um, a person who owns a Mac book and some other versions of this. Um, what we're going to talk about today, um, <clears throat> we're going to basically introduce the Revo scale package. Um, which is a highly parallel and multi-threaded um, computational package available with SQL Server. Um, um, we're going to talk about how to integrate it into the uh, Transact SQL and a couple of visualizations and how to represent your data. But let me first talk about the problems, analytical barriers that um, Microsoft basically had to challenge when discussing about R and um, R integration. First of all, there was always the problem of low productivity. Those who are either working in small or bigger um, companies, low productivity is also the problem of the cultural gaps between the IT and data scientists. Um, there is also always a problem of um, complex infrastructure, data integration and deployment can be delayed, a slow innovation, lack of data science knowledge, deployment practices, also the slow model processing and deploying. And also there is there was also a problem of who is who and um, who owns the data. Also the talk about the data scientists, talent scarcity is also always a problem. Um, but now uh, Microsoft addressed these issues by um, broadening the talent in terms of embracing the open source R, um, basically democrat democratizing data science, taking some of the load off the back of the data scientists and usually just using also the power of um, knowledge and the power from the data wranglers um, and any other data analysts. Also, um, what they addressed was um, the increase of the productivity. Um, with our integration, um, you can accelerate the model life cycle. You are basically able to do analysis on any kind of model that is pretty much deployed. Um, also, the, the question of the democratizing and uh, modernizing the infrastructure, um, like Hadoop and any kind of um, flexible or on-premises or in-cloud infrastructure is now also available to do um, any kind of data analysis. But let's first talk about what is R. R is a language and um, R is also a movement. Um, in fact, R is a movement the way um, things are evolving for the past couple of years. Um, and why it is a movement? Because um, it is um, much more than just a language. Everybody is going towards the R, towards the R. Every, everything is basically coming together um, in this language for um, statistical analysis, for um, data predictions, for any kind of stuff. So, first of all, um, it is a platform, which means that um, you can do any kind of um, 
statistical and data scientist um, tasks, um, it is a data visualization framework um, and it is provided as a free software. Um, but besides that, what makes our also a movement is the community and the system which enables this movement. First of all, it is the community which drives the R language. Um, it creates new packages. It constantly is responsible for development. Um, there is estimated to be around 3 million users and there is also the repositories, um, CRAN, Bioconductor and GitHub, which um, take care of um, any kind of um, new packages that they comply to all the rules that um, our consortium is taking care of. Um, historically speaking, R was developed in the 80s, um, deriving from um, the S language as, as a statistic, <laughs> um, but then uh, in the 90s it was really um, launched um, and much as you know, it was put on the map um, and ever since it was um, just gaining on popularity. It was first um, sort of like a university driven language but then it also got into the broader community. Um, there is also um, our foundation and our consortium, both are responsible and um, taking care of the administration of the um, R engine as a core and all the packages. Um, Microsoft is since two years I think um, also the member in um, our consortium besides on other big companies. And um, on the right, right hand side you can see how the um, popularity actually gained through the packages. So um, R actually is an engine um, and it comes with you know all the statistical um, functions. Um, then on top of that there are packages developed by the community which enables any kind of additional um, statistical or data mining or data prediction um, task um, also for data manipulation, any kind of task that data scientists or data analysts would need. Um, as you can see um, in the past two years um, I think the packages, the number of packages for R has just been tripled. Um, and also in terms of the R usage growth in the community as you can see that it has slowly but steadily gaining the popularity um, also, um, being as a primary tool or as a secondary tool, but R is definitely becoming much more popular. Um, also, by the EEE spectrum, it is becoming um, much more relevant. Um, also, what makes R much more relevant is the fact that it is open and that there are so many packages available scoping from different um, problems in terms of data analysis or in terms of um, any kind of data manipulation task. Uh, currently there are more than 9,000 packages available. Um, you can see what topics they are covering. You can see some of them from um, cluster analysis to probability distribution to multivariate statistics to machine learning, statistical learning, um, any kind of stuff you can actually do with R there is or should be a package available. Um, R is also besides being a um, powerful statistical um, environment, uh, it is also very good for data visualization. Um, also a couple of beautiful um, and really powerful packages are available like ggplot, um, very good uh, for um, data visualization. Um, you can do any kind of, um, for instance, if you're interested in analysis of um, social media, there are a couple of packages just waiting for you to use them to, let's say, grab some um, data from Twitter, from LinkedIn, from Facebook, um, or just, you know, use any kind of package to um, connect your data to, um, let's say, Microsoft Azure um, or any kind of external data set. It really is depending on um, what kind of 
task you are tackling and trying to grasp. But there are also some limitations. Those who are working with R, everybody, I think it is pretty much aware that R, in fact, is memory-based, which makes it a huge, huge limitation. Um, there is also, and always was, the lack of parallel computation. The problem with R was also the duplication of the data and data movement itself. Imagine just doing some ODBC um, connector from your CSV file or from any kind of data engine to R engine. There is always the question whether you know both data sets are the same. Um, has anything changed during the data movement? Has the, the data model been updated and um, it's not been um, the same on both sides and stuff like that. Also the question was about being an open source which tended to um, spark the questions about the providence and the governments of the product and of course also you know if it's an open source does it um, have the enterprise support and vice versa. So there was also you know some limitations to the R as a free software but also um, questions arising from that. So what happened was um, two years ago Microsoft acquired um, the company called Revolution Analytics. The Revolution Analytics had um, in their, um, they had um, two versions of R, one was R Open, the other one was R Enterprise. So what Microsoft did was they kept the stack the same, so they had um, R Open became Microsoft R Open and a Revolution R Enterprise became two flavored version of Enterprise. One was one is Microsoft R Server and the other one is uh, Microsoft SQL Server R Services. Um, the first one is, so the Microsoft R Open is free. Um, it is open source R distribution. Um, but there is some enhancement to the um, algorithms available for the analytical pur purposes. And then there is this commercial line, um, which is a built-in um, advanced analytics. Um, you can have a um, couple of different flavors and we'll just cover that in a bit. Um, and what Microsoft also did was, with the support of our server, um, you can now connect um, your data or just push your computations um, to also to the other systems like um, Hadoop, Teradata, um, any kind of, um, or even on out of the, in the cloud. It's not just that it's on the premises, you can use any kind of uh, stuff. So, <clears throat> uh, Microsoft are Mm, the family of the products is um, Microsoft R Open, R Client, uh, Microsoft SQL R Services, Microsoft R Server, and then there is a couple of different versions of Microsoft R Server based on the flavor, as as I said, you know, for Linux, for Teradata, for Hadoop, or for HD Insight. Um, it is developing quite fast, and um, you know, from you have to check if there is any kind of novelties in terms of bringing new connectors um, to the product family um, and that's it. Um, first of all, let's talk about our server. Our server um, evolved, as I said, from the revolution our enterprise. Um, it is by far the most used version of our in the Microsoft R product family. It is based on the open source R, uh, but it was adapted for the enterprise scale, uh, which means that there are some um, computational um, and multi-threaded parallel um, computations available um, in comparison to our open R client um, where there are some limitations. Um, it is available for, for multi-platforms, which means um, that you can have your data um, that you can do your computations either in Hadoop, Teradata, or you can just get the data out of there. Um, it is interoperable um, and, of course, it is a hybrid, which is great since we are <laughs> in, 
in the hybrid virtual chapter today, um, which means that you can run the data on the premises or you can just push the computations in the cloud or get the data out of the cloud, vice versa. Everything is, essentially everything is possible. Um, and as I said, Microsoft R server is definitely meant for big scale data set and big data set, which means that it is, it is capable of doing um, a lot of computations on larger data sets. So, Microsoft R open. Um, as I said, Microsoft R open, it is um, open source based, um, but it is sort of a enhanced R distribution version which Microsoft delivered, um, still 100% open source. Um, this version is um, fully compatible with um, any existing R engine, um, which, mean, which means that any kind of R code, legacy R code, is fully compatible with this existing R, um, Microsoft R Open engine. Um, Microsoft R Open has also additional high-performance multi-threaded enhancement, um, and it's called MKL, which stands for Math Kernel Library, um, and it is um, good for any kind of mathematical operations for vector or matrix-based data sets. Um, Microsoft R Open, it is available for both Windows or Linux platforms. Um, and in addition, it is fully compatible with Metacrane, CRAN, GitHub, or Bioconductor. Um, so any, kind, any package available there can be used in Microsoft R Open. There is unfortunately some limitations to Microsoft R Open. And first of all, um, there is no support for the memory, which means that R Open is basically limited by the memory which is available on your client or your computer or your machine that you're running any kind of um, computations. And um, the data set itself, the size of the data set, will only fit the memory available on your computer which you're going to use to process the data. Uh, the proprietary scale are algorithms and functions um, all available in RevoScale uh, package will not run under our open version, which means that um, you need to have the R open um, upgraded to our client or Microsoft R server. And um, in terms of the additions, uh, Microsoft R open is available um, in any uh, SQL Server 2016 edition, except for the Express or Express with tools. Um, whereas the Microsoft um, R client or Microsoft R server um, is um, available only in Enterprise and Development Edition. Um, Microsoft R server itself, um, as I said, it is the most popular um, version of R server uh, in the Microsoft R um, product family, um, especially, as I said, for the enterprise editions because it is, um, um, it goes and it was meant for the enterprise um, environment. Um, like our open and our client versions, um, it, it does support statistical analysis, data mining, any kind of predictive analytics with machine learning, but as I said, for the big data. Um, our server is fully compatible with with CRAN and um, GitHub Bioconductor uh, repositories and the scale R algorithms, which we will cover in a couple of slides. Um, functions of those scale R algori algorithms are capable of parallel and multi-threaded data processing and um, computation can be done, as I said, on much, much larger data sets. Um, basically, and the reason behind is um, memory. Um, it can um, scale out basically linearly, which means that um, there is no way um, you would have, you know, uh, memory problems. Um, it also uses um, Connect R and um, distributed R um, functions, which are um, 
available for um, doing parallel and multi-noded, um, multi-threaded um, computations. A couple of words about our client. Um, our client is also 100% um, free version of um, R open. Um, if you're, you know, in a big company or made a medium-sized company, usually um, you would have our client installed on your um, computer for the um, data scientist or data wrangler or any kind of people who are doing any kind of statistical analysis. Um, but it has, um, in terms of, um, it has um, capabilities of rival scale um, algorithms available, which means that um, you can do any kind of um, heavy parallelization or multi-threaded computing. Um, also, um, you can do any or all of the um, rival scale libraries um, capabilities. There are some limitations to our client, um, be aware of that. Um, so one is definitely um, the, um, it is limited to the local memory as our open. Keep in mind that, but uh, the best part is that with our client you can push any kind of computations that might be memory uh, limited to the to the R server or SQL server R services. Um, the other limitation is that um, it can be it can use only threaded at a single time. Even if your client machine is much better, it be multi-core whatever um, the um, Microsoft R client will be capable of doing only two threads at the same time. Um, all the computations is also limited to the client capabilities like DSPREM or speed. Um, as I said, the good part is that you can push all the computations to the um, cloud, to Hadoop, to Teradata, to Microsoft R server, or as I said, SQL SQL server for our services. Um, apart from that, um, this is um, Microsoft R client, um, and coming back to the Microsoft R server, Microsoft R server um, basically has deploy R and development R. Deploy R um, is a web service, AP integration, so um, it, you can basically do um, any kind of call or any kind of computation using Deploy R, and Develop R is basically just the user interface um, for the Visual Studio, um, uh, R tools for the Visual Studio, um, or those who are using R Studio. Um, it basically is for connecting to the different data sources. Um, about Deploy R, um, it can also do um, some sort of abstraction um, usage of R without basically knowing it. Um, also, um, two additional and very important uh, functions for the Microsoft R server, which are connect and distributed R. Those are very important because um, those two um, functions basically um, support and give the scale R algorithms um, its capability to do um, multi-threaded and um, parallel computations. So the connect R is basically just a series of connectors and the distributed R is the normalization layer for the um, scale R algorithms. Normalization layer, it means that you can do the, you can normalize your data across different, um, different sockets, different threads, um, it basically just goes and sees what kind of um, infrastructure your system has and based on that it then distributed, distri distributes the load across the nodes or the CPUs or the software. And the scale R, scale R is I think the, the most important part, um, well, we will cover this in a couple of, uh, in just in a bit, um, when you are using um, SQL Microsoft R server and you're doing any kind of statistical computations, the scale R is basically um, the package um, with all the 
um, functions and all of the um, algorithms that you can do um, any kind of statistical analysis against. Um, it is also very important because scale R can do the block computations, which means that it does not need or require any kind of additional memory. So the data basically is um, put into the blocks and then block by block is being um, computated. Um, traditionally, um, the way um, how the data was basically um, pumped into the R um, server from, sorry, for, um, into the R engine from any kind of um, SQL server or MySQL or any kind of database um, to R engine, it was traditionally using the ODBC connectors. Uh, ODBC connectors were a lot of bottlenecks in performance was um, discovered using ODBC connectors. Um, also, with the extraction of the data, you would have two, as I said at the beginning, two different data, um, two different data sets, and you would always need to take care that those would remain the same. Uh, also, the movement of the data across the ODBC connector would um, give the security issues. Um, any kind of additional security issues would be in terms of the storage. Um, you know, keeping the same data set on two different locations might also yield some security stuff. At the end, would also what would also mean what uh, was um, the costs. So the cost of the storage would also um, represent a problem. So the Microsoft, what they did was they changed this. So they provided a solution that. Um, you can only extract the data once, so the data basically resides on in one place, so you don't have to have two different versions of data sets. Um, and it just, when it um, grabs the data through the data connectors, um, it does the parallelization and all the computation. The computations itself are much faster um, because they are um, rewritten. Um, the original a lot of original um, um, our algorithms were written in Fortran. What Microsoft did, they, they did a great, great, great job um, rewriting everything in C++, um, which means that the computations would run much faster. Um, and they were also able to um, do the, as I said a couple of slides back, to do the operating block one at the time, which means that you would just put the data um, block by block into the data, um, sorry, into the RAM, and you would have um, everything there, um, but you would not need to have everything um, rerun back and forth, back and forth, block data set as a whole, but just block at the time. Um, going. Okay, so how does the parallelization work? So, um, as I said, there is no RAM limitation. The computation is done much faster because everything was rewritten in um, C++ instead of the Fortran. Um, and the result is now that um, Results can be directly deployed in any kind, any enterprise application. Um, with scale R, um, with scale R um, algorithms, user users will um, basically just make one single call um, to the R engine, um, and then the distributed R will the component distributed R will take care to determine number of um, blocks, number of cores, number of sockets, number of threads, and then basically launch a smaller parts of the data. So the data would be basically sliced into the smaller blocks, um, which then results of no usage of the memory, basically just small amount of usage of the memory. Um, at the end, data would reside in this XDF data format, which stands for external data frame. Um, because it is um, rewritten, um, also the external data frame format is um, about five times smaller than your traditional comma-separated value file or text file. Um, 
because the when the data is loaded into the RAM, um, the exact replica of that data is then put back into the um, data set, so into the file, which means that um, it is about five times um, smaller and it is faster because the replica of the data set, which is the same as in RAM, it is now residing in the file. So there is no parsing needed when the data um, block of the data are then parsed together, um, I mean parsed together, there, no, there is no need of parsing and then sorting and everything, um, so we can just load the data from this external data frame. And also the retrieval time is um, due to this external data frame, um, it is super, super fast. So now let's go for a quick demo, I will show you the um, Rebel Scale um, library and um, how fast it is. So um, I'm just going to call um, the Rebel Scale package and here I have a sample data set, um, airline um, da simple data set which comes um, with uh, the installation of um, our engine and what I will do is I will um, read the data into my um, external data frame file. This you do only once, in this case I'm running, I'm having 180 megabytes of data, um, about eight and a half million rows. Um, it should take around 40 minutes but you know the results may vary <laughs> um, and there is, um, I've decided to put um, 200,000 rows per chunk, so the chunk we decide, uh, or, or the block we were discussing previously, so a block of data set is 200,000 lines and 8 million, 8.5 million rows is then split in all those um, smaller blocks for uh, faster data computation. So um, I've needed like yeah, 28 seconds to load the data. Now I can explore the data set and you can see that the number of the records, what kind of data set I'm having, um, just a couple of sample rows and now I can for instance create a histogram. Again, um, every time I evoke, I call a um, Revo scale or scale R uh, function, um, I have to define where I'm getting the data, in this case I'm taking the data from this external data frame, um, again the data itself is being read into in chunks um, and then the histogram is being created on my right hand side, so this is um, the histogram of 180 megabytes of data. Um, I can also create some sort of a summary of the data if I'm interested, you know, a couple of, um, it should be a frequency table, going up, going up, going up, yeah, exactly. Number of categories, number of observations, number of missing observations, just stuff like that. I can also do, for instance, sorting of the data if I need to have my data being pre-sorted, but again, imagine uh, four seconds for sorting the data based on the um, delay, arrival delay. Um, I can also do some sort of the um, linear model, um, in this case, again, I'll use the same data set um, and I will use the last one. So I've created three different versions uh, but with the report progress one, two, and blocks per read is just, you know, playing with some of the parameters. Um, if you're interested, for instance, you can write help um, and you can do this and just run that and you will get all the information about this function. So, um, lean mod stands for um, sort of linear model, which is a regression model um, and you can easily see, you know, I was testing um, delay, arrival delay versus the departure time um, and you can see the estimates of the model.
Um, I can also use, you know, multiple dependent variables for those who are into the statistics you will understand. Um, again, I am using the um, Revo scale or scale R functions. Um, keep in mind that all of the functions basically are um, scale R functions have a Rx prefix, so it is much easier to um, separate from the traditional stats or base package uh, functions. And I can also do summary on that. You can see um, day of the week and, and all the coefficients and how the model is performing. Um, I can also do summary of that regression model. Um, now I'm going to load um, 13 gigabytes of data which resides on my um, computer, my um, laptop. I'm just going to define where the data is and I'm just going to load the data. Um, and you will see it should take around 40, 45 seconds. Again, um, there is 200 uh, rows per chunk. Again, chunk is a bucket. Um, again, what the um, Revo scale is now doing is, first of all, it is defining how many um, sockets, how many CPUs, how many threads I have available. Uh, I am running a Microsoft R server, which means I have no limitations in comparison if I would be running R client or R open. If I would have R open, I couldn't run that. Um, so when defines, you know, how many of what kind of computer and compute power I have, then it decides how to um, do all the computations um, against that. Uh, and since my data resides in this external um, data frame format, um, it performs much faster. So it needed like a minute or so. And now I have my um, histogram again plotted on 13 gigabyte of data. For one minute, I think it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, um, and with this demo, I will show you um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a ODBC uh, package, and this is my um, data string to my SQL Server engine. I'm just going to quickly show you the difference between um, scale R algorithm and traditional um, R algorithm. So I'm just going to load some data. Um, so this is from the Wide World Importers Data Warehouse database. Um, just just play it with the data. Just going to close the connection. Okay, so let's see what kind of data I'm having. So this is my data. I'm having sales ID, city key, customer key, stock item, and quantity. And now I'm going to perform a simple clustering with k-means. Um, k-means, I think, it is in um, stat package. Let me see. Yeah. It is in stats package. Um, and I'm going to run, I'm having this proc time just to give you the output, how fast or how slow the computation is. Um, and I'm, okay, so it needed like five seconds to do the calculation for um, k-means using the Lloyd algorithm based on my um, data set which I took from my SQL Server database. Um, well, I don't even bother to run this code. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna invoke the Revel Scale package, and with invoking of that package, now I can use the same um, k-means um, algorithm. As I said, it is prefixed with Rx, which means that it is from the Revel Scale package. And essentially, I'm going to run the same code. Um, here, I'm just naming my variables by their names. Um, in this example, I just said, you know, take the first column, second, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially, it is the same. And I'm just going to run it. And it should be, yeah, it should be around one minute, uh, sorry, one second, which means that it is in comparison to the traditional one, it is around five times faster. Um, the beautiful part about this um, 
the beautiful part about this um, scale R algorithms is that um, they're totally um, compatible with any kind of the results of those are um, compatible with any kind of um, functions from different packages, in this case ggplot. Uh, I can use a ggplot in this case to plot um, the clusters. Um, again, I will use something which would be much faster. Um, I'm just gonna create another data set. It's gonna, it should be fast. Okay, and I'm going to do hierarchical, cl hierarchical clustering, sorry, <laughs> and I'm going to plot this data set. Again, you can clearly see number of clusters, um, one, two, three, four, five different clusters on my um, data set. Okay, going back to the slides. Uh, okay, so we've done the demo. Um, so the scale R algorithms, as I said, they are prefixed with Rx. Um, there is about 80 algorithms which were rewritten um, for this scale R package um, and are extremely fast. Um, in terms of the um, what they can do is you can use them for data preparation, for the descriptive statistics, statistical tests, sampling, of course, for the predictive models. Um, simulations, cluster analysis, which I showed. Um, you can do the classifications and also the combinations with some other systems. Um, those are very good um, if you go to the um, vignette of this um, package, you can find the beautiful descriptions about each of the function um, and also some sample codes to start with. But in fact, as I said, we will talk about how to integrate um, R in SQL Server, Transact SQL, and this is how it is done. There is this execute, SP execute external script procedure, which enables you to run um, natively um, R code in Transact SQL. Um, there's been quite a debate about um, it is not good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I can tell you that I've my first integration R of SQL Server was four years ago, and I did it with ODBC. And I can tell you I had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems in terms of security, in terms of speed, in terms of computation, in terms of um, running um, against the different data sets. So all the data. Um, that is coming from R to um, SQL must be in the data frame, um, but without that, you know, there would be a lot of different uh, data manipulation packages and everything which you would need to run in terms of, you know, doing and storing the data into the different data frames. Um, and there was also, I had a lot of um, memory issues um, bottlenecks, security issues, especially security issues, um, and there was no dedicated um, platform to run any R um, using ODBC. So what Microsoft did, they created this external uh, execute external script procedure um, where you just say, um, you define language, you define R script, and then you define input data. In this case, I'm using input data as a standard SQL server query, select query. Uh, for the R, for the script, I'm using a R script. So this is what Microsoft created, and you can run this from the management studio. It is beautiful, it is faster, and you don't need to worry about the security, you don't need to worry about the memory leaks, you don't need to worry about having data on millions of different places, um, you know, and also now you can give this code to data wrangler, to the, you know, any data analyst, you don't need to be the master data scientist to run that. Um, and what they did was, in my opinion, my personal opinion, a tremendous and good job, and I know that they will also um, work on that to make it even better. Um, so this was essentially how 
the frame of the this um, ex execute external script uh, procedure works, and um, this is a typical um, R code, um, which I'm using a naive bias. This is from Microsoft example, um, calling Iris data sample and doing um, a prediction with naive bias. Again. This is a traditional R code, legacy R code. If you run this, um, everything will work. But it might be slower as in terms of this. Um, again, it is the same code, but now we are um, using the scale R algorithm. Again, the same algorithm, um, but it will perform much faster, much better. Um, you can also define what kind of um, compute context you want to have if you are running on our client, um, Microsoft R client, you can say, okay, use the Microsoft R server to push all the computations there and vice versa. So that's pretty substantial improvement um, for those who were using um, ODBC a couple of years ago. You know, this, this is a extremely good improvement. And this is how the scale R code is looking. I think um, we've seen this demo. Um, quickly to demo. So now I'm going to go to the um, Management Studio. So for those who are using Management Studio, first of all, a couple of things. Um, there you need to have the um, SP Configure um, external script enabled, um, so make sure that you have run value um, set to 1, um, and also make sure once you reset the run value, so if you do like this, and then you go, and then you say reconfigure, red zone, um, make sure that you also restart under the services, uh, just going to go quickly, services, I'll show you, I will show you, um, you will find the launchpad, SQL Server launchpad is right here. Make sure that you restart that. So SQL Server launchpad is actually the service responsible for doing all the computations. Um, so I'm having on this computer I a um, Microsoft R server. Um, and it is responsible for running any kind of R computations. Um, you also should check the um, server properties if you have installed advanced analytics. Also, the version should be 13 or above. And also, as I said, you know, huge improvement in terms of permissions. Um, make sure that uh, your, the user you're running with has the execute external script. Um, permissions dedicated. So how does the script work itself? So as I said, first of all, you define the R language. Currently there is only R language available. Um, it was said that also Python would be available or the USQL uh, should be available. We will see. Uh, currently only this and then you put in the R script. This is the same R script if I would be running this in R environment. This patch of the script, I would get the same results. But um, with the SP execute external script, everything is provided for you. So you just run this and you get the results back into the management studio in form of a table, which is a tremendous and absolutely outstanding job because you can use that set of the data to do any additional computations or whatever you need to do. So um, now this is the a bit better example. So this is my data set. Uh, sorry, this is my um, Transact SQL script. So I'm using the AdventureWorks uh, data set. I'm just going to execute that to show you that I'm getting back some data. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the data set. So this would be my data set. Uh, I'm going to push it to the R uh, environment. And I'm going to say um, plot me a um, dendrogram based on this data set. So if I run this, I will have some sort of a hierarchical cluster um, displayed in uh, var binary. But if I'll have this, um, I can show you, I will show you um, implemented in um, 
reporting services, um, you should be able to see much better results. So I'm just going to go to my reporting services and I'm going to launch the demo 03 and I'm going to say number of clusters. So I'm going to say three for instance. I'm going to run the report and um, now what the report is doing, this is essentially this graph um, which I've showed you um, with this code. So this code basically generates this graph um, in reporting services. Again, totally beautiful for visualizing the data. Um, I can just push and say, okay, now um, a data wrangler can play with the data and say, okay, what if what happens if my data set on my data set I said instead of three clusters I want to have data separated in four clusters. Um, it is neatly um, it is very beautiful uh, visualization and then additional statistics about four clusters or three clusters and stuff like that. Um, so this is everything, uh, as I said, you know, enhanced uh, by our server. Um, you can also generate any kind of data. Again, I'm using the same data set as before. So this is, again, the same Trasect SQL. And I can do any kind of data um, manipulation. So I'm just going to run this and we will see what happens. I'm getting some information. So I think this should be a frequency table for the um, different data groups. Um, and you can then do this um, data manipulation further on. I can also have, for instance, uh, I can also store this um, statistics in a procedure and I can run some additional, let's say, number of clusters three, and I can run this um, based on the input parameter. I can say four, and um, different results will pop up. Um, I can also do um, any kind of um, additional predictions. So this is my data set. It's from AdventureWorks. And what we want to see if a particular customer will be um, bike buyer or not, I'm just going to grab this. And for a particular customer, this is what I said, for this particular customer, um, I, I want to see the probability of prediction, um, how much um, is this customer, um, how much likely is this that this customer will be a bike buyer. And going back to the slides, okay, um, as I said, this was the um, our code that, for instance, you can use to visualize the data. Um, the last slide, um, so the benefits of our integration, um, I think I've said a couple of them, uh, but just to recap, um, so um, it is, um, it enables you to do the distributed workload. Um, you can do the multi-threading and you can do the parallelization. Uh, the beautiful part is you can run it on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, uh, different flavors of it. So we can do a Hadoop, Teradata, HG Insight. Um, much faster um, model prediction, model deployment in terms of, you know, large, um, environment or large corporate environment. There is no memory constraint whatsoever. Um, less data movement, which means less costs. Um, faster data movements, less bottlenecks in terms of performance, in terms of people, in terms of questions, problems. Um, there is no data size to um, no data size limitations, especially if you are having Microsoft R server installed, make sure that, you know, your data set is huge. <laughs> um, you can also use it in hybrid topologies, which means that you can, you know, you can use cloud, you can do on-premises, you can do both, you can combine them, you can export the data to a different platform, to a different language. Uh, it is very agile in terms of development if you are doing any kind of in-house development. Uh, also, very stable platform for data operalization. In terms of um, SLIs, in terms of agreement, Microsoft did a great job. Um, so they took 
care of that because they knew that people might have some second thoughts in terms of um, SLIs, in terms of agreement. Um, the R code is available in Management Studio at your ease, which means that you know you can use Management Studio and you can insert the R code and just run it, which is beautiful. Um, community and commercial support. So if you're running Microsoft R Open, there is always the community. If you're running Microsoft R Server or SQL Server R services, which we showed today. Um, there is always a commercial Microsoft support, which is, again, beautiful thing. Um, and, you know, if you have any problem, you can just Google it, which means that the, the community is getting stronger, bigger um, every day. And if you have any kind of R language problem, you know, there is always, you know, any kind of forum where you go and you can get some answers. Uh, and of course, R itself, as we said at the beginning, is growing in popularity. Um, all three or all four versions are basically based on open source R, um, either Microsoft R Open, Microsoft R Client, or Microsoft R Server. Again, it is up to you how you want to implement it in your company, um, what kind of model you're having, um, how many people are going to be involved, what kind of different departments, and how you want your um, workflow to be handled in terms of different versions of or different flavors of Microsoft R, um, Microsoft R Server. Any questions, please pose them um, on the panel. Mark will um, take care of that. Uh, if you want to contact me, uh, email me, follow me on Twitter. There is also a blog. Um, I'm constantly blogging about R and uh, Microsoft R server, the problems, the questions. Um, uh, a colleague of mine, Diane Sarka, who you probably know, uh, just find a very interesting uh, thing today. Uh, I'm still, we are solving it. <laughs> so, um, you know, a lot of um, new material on the blog um, and also um, Microsoft corporate blog is full of new stuff um, and new um, successful case stories. Um, going back to you, Mark, this is from my side. Everything, so questions, please. Uh, start now. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Thomas. That's excellent. Yeah, we've got a few questions. Um, okay. Okay, so the first one, let me just try and uh, interpret this a little, little bit. If Is there really much benefit to installing our server um, if, you, if you can use the SQL Server R integration directly? Um, if you install our server, uh, you can have capabilities of um, pushing the data into the cloud, into the Hadoop. Really depends on what kind of data set you have. If you have, let's say, a document oriented database or if you want to do any kind of unstructured data, Microsoft R server will definitely be benefited. Uh, in terms of SQL, Microsoft SQL R services, um, this is in database, basically, Microsoft R server which means that it was created and it is created to handle all the work in um, SQL Server. Um, and there you have also the SQL Server Trusted Launchpad. Um, but essentially, um, mm, there is additional, um, you can use, for instance, the, the Resource Governor, which I haven't mentioned, um, but all the memory and all the disk will be managed by your instance of SQL Server, uh, and therefore there is also capability of doing the resource governor and stuff like that. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think that kind of covers the next question a little bit. Um, okay. But the question is: Is does SQL Server offer the best database platform for our analytic connectivity? So, as a, I guess, as a source repository for data, is there a benefit to using SQL over, say, Oracle or, I don't know, MySQL or...? 
Um, I think the, in terms of the connectivity to our server, um, I haven't tested, for instance, I haven't tested with Oracle or MySQL, uh, but uh, in terms of the SQL server, I think this is so easy, so extremely easy, especially if you are very homey with Transact SQL uh, and you are getting to know R or you are also good with R. You know, it is extremely easy and extremely fast to use the uh, R uh, server with SQL Server engine because you know you you're just gonna love it. it, it there's no really other way to say it, <laughs> sure. um, and it's so easy to use it. I don't have any other things to say, but just easy, 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 simple and easy. So I think you've you've probably covered that in your answer because uh, somebody asks. <laughs> uh, so Zar here asked whether um, or how it compares to Oracle's R integration. I don't know if you've experienced that particular. I don't. I don't use uh, Oracle, but um, I can um, just from the top of my head. Probably everybody nowadays is uh, creating some sort of a, a connectors to our engine. Uh, I haven't tested any of those uh, with Oracle because I don't use it. But what Microsoft did, I said, as I said, um, in comparison to what we did a couple of years ago, you know, with uh, ODBC connectors and stuff like that, they did a extremely tremendous job. And not to mention that you can also use um, this um, script also in Power BI to do the data visual visualization. Uh, you can. As, a, as I've shown, you can use it in uh, reporting services, you can use it in the um, integration services, um, you can use it in Azure. You know, there is a service available, machine learning in Azure, you can also use the R code there. And there are also connectors to that. You can also use it to, for, for using it for the Spark. You know, it's just, just waiting for you to use it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think you okay. touched upon this as well. How would you limit memory consumption by our services? Uh, definitely using the um, resource governor. Okay. That's it. Use the resource governor. Um, say how much you want to have the uh, memory dedicated for the uh, Microsoft SQL Server Trusted Launchpad, and that's it. And Just based on that, it will it will run uh, memory and CPU. Okay, cool. I mean, do you know roughly what kind of memory we'd be looking for governing? I mean, what, how much would we allocate to our server? It really depends. It really depends on uh, what kind of data sets and uh, what kind of um, statistical analysis we are running. So I've been playing around with different sets, but really it depends um, if you are just doing some sort of a regression analysis. I would say, okay, you don't need that much RAM, but if you're doing any kind of cluster analysis or any kind of neural networks, you know, then I would say, yeah, just grant a bit more memory and a bit more CPU power to, to uh, at the time of the running. If you find uh, that your um, SQL server is, can't handle that, then just push the computation to the cloud and that's it. Sure. Okay. Awesome question from Zahir again. With uh, so he asked that uh, if we load data from a SQL table into an R data set, can it be reused yep. by some other user? Uh, reused where? Um, so I think he's suggesting can the data set that we're, we've loaded up can that be reused by another user? Because um, I'm presuming I, he's talking about the uh, XDFs. Um, it really, it's hard to it's hard to answer. Uh, once you have the XDF, you can give or you can multiply the XDF to any other machine. It really depends on the architecture. If uh, many users are using their clients and they are connecting, they are putting their um, computational um, context to the same, let's say, to the same. Um, um, data frame, external data frame, then you can use it, yes. Um, otherwise, if you're just running it on the client, then you should just share this XDF. But otherwise, um, if you store the results or the data back to the SQL Server engine, yes, then others can also use it. If you're r running it locally, then no. Um, but you can share the external data frame by just copying it and okay. then um, sharing it with the others, but then you would kind of, you know, break the, the you know, one version of true law so that, you know, you would okay. have the updated data. 
Okay, great. Um, one thing that wasn't particularly clear to me was the yep. was the actual XDFs themselves. So, is that a prerequisite of doing our analytics that we have to create these XDFs, or can we just run analytics directly against the source relational data? Uh, if you are not using the scale R, so there is currently. 80, 90 functions in this scale R algorithm available. Um, for the demo I've showed, I was comparing the scale R um, k-mean classif classification and normal classification. In terms of those which are not available, then external data frame will not be used or there's no need to creating it because the, any other function from different package will not be able to uh, interpret the external data frame. Um, so it really depends on which function if you're using, if you're using the right function, and that's it. In your R scripts, um, I noticed yep. that there was a closed connection that you, you were doing. Now, uh, I know that in a traditional database itself, if, for instance, if you're closing, closing cursors, if you forget to do that, there's memory um, and performance considerations there. Is there any of the same kind of considerations if you do the same thing with R scripts and forget to close the connections? Um, no. So if you're running it from the Transact SQL, no. There is no need to do that because there is a uh, launchpad responsible to, to do all the memory, any kind of you know open, threaded, whatever. Okay. Um, there is basically launchpad doing the garbage collection. <laughs> Let's say it like that. So, sure. um, and memory management. So you don't you don't need to worry about that as well. Uh, in my R script I'm just closing the connection so that I don't have any, you know, differences or that I'm just cleaning the memory. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Yep. So n next question. Did I hear correctly that Python is not currently supported and are there any plans for Microsoft to do so? Um, currently it's not supported um, using this external um, script. Um, there were some, you know, thoughts and some hinges and, you know, just people talking about it that Python might be the second one. Um, there is currently, I haven't noticed anything that there would be a strong yes. There might be something on the Microsoft Ignite going right about now. Um, but um, you can integrate um, Python. Uh, into SQL Server again, it would be a bit of a um, you know homemade mm -hmm. solution. <laughs> um, you can you can do it, um, but the the hunch that I'm using why might Python be the next one is because Azure basically supports R and Python. So right. if you go to Azure Machine Learning Service, uh, you can have Python and you can have R scripts available right there. So you can do the Python computation, you can use the Python uh, libraries, and you can use the R computation and R packages. So, Great. Okay. But we, 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 will, sure. we will see. Uh, okay. <laughs> say. I'm not from Microsoft. Sure. Fingers crossed on that one. Uh, a few yeah. more questions yeah. left. Now we'll, we'll um, speed it along so that people can get home or, or go to bed okay. or whatever they need to do. Um, <laughs> so, R was derived from M, um, I believe. Will R be the end of the uh, scientific lang languages, or can we expect an S? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, you know, there is so many um, open source languages now um, emerging. Um, for those who are from the New Zealand, they know uh, Veka. Again, a um, university-driven language. Okay. Um, those who are coming from Slovenia, for instance, you everybody heard about Orange, uh, also open source based on Python. Um, there is um, K9 as well. Um, many, many, many different languages. Uh, apparently, R is you know the longest um, and the oldest being present. So uh, I don't see any kind of you know any kind of signs that R would just regress just sure. out of a sudden. So it's just really steadily just being much, 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 much more popular. Making it open source and making it available for the community um, to develop new packages, it, it's even more appealing to, 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 to the users. And um, I don't see any kind of 
that the, this would be either going back or just vanishing. No, no way. Okay, cool. No way. Just had a correction. I've I've just had a correction in my question from Robert. So thank you to Robert who says uh, that um, uh, the R came from S, uh, and yeah. M M is the one that she's by, by Power BI. So thank you to Robert for yeah. clearing that one up. Yeah. Um, so two more questions. Uh, are there any benefits to having yeah. R server and SQL server on the same box? Um, I mean, if you're really it depends on your limitations and your you know architecture, uh, I would definitely have them separated uh, in terms of monitoring, in terms of um, governing. Uh, but it's really up to you. I'm running you know everything on my laptop. Um, if you can have the possibility, yes, I would suggest to have them separated. Um, as I said, you know. Um, much better governance, much better monitoring. Um, what Microsoft did with this um, distributed and connect um, functions, you know, they just made it much, much, much easier to have um, um, those connectors run much faster. Uh, but again, as I said, it's up to you how you want to define um, your environment. I have, I have the client on my computer. I have. Um, Microsoft R server on my computer and also SQL Server R services running on my computer. So, but you can have this distributed based on your um, corporate, you know, architecture or environment. Okay, great. So, final question. Um, yeah. If someone is looking to getting into data science, so a newbie like myself, for instance, um, okay. and, and are, what is the best way for them to get it, get started? So I'll, I'll give you um, a, a course name that's been recommended to me, although I've not tried it out yet, Coursera, I, I believe, yeah. offer, offer some training. Yeah. It, would, yeah. Is there any that you'd recommend? Uh, Udemy, Coursera, I don't want to do any, you know, I don't want to do any pub, Sure. <laughs> um, you know, we should have but, had them as sponsor, um, shouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, there is also a Microsoft uh, Virtual Academy um, okay. coming up now with beautiful, um, you know, very for for the newbies, for instance, uh, beautiful data science. What is data science? How to start, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there is also a lot of books. Um, if you go books online by Microsoft, you will find. Uh, also, all the steps how to start, you know, for instance, just solving one problem. But what what I can say from my uh, past experience is, um, yeah, start with statistics. Starts with start with mathematics. Um, data science itself is sounds so appealing, but in fact is you know statistics in behind, which you know in fact is a lot of theories and a lot of mathematics. Once you do that, you will just just blast off to to. To have you know all the analysis done, learning R itself, the language itself. If you have any pro programming background, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, it is much more about understanding the statistics, about understanding the uh, statistical analysis, data mining, and then that's it. So, okay, but cool. yes, go online or just go look for the books. It's um, I can also do some recommendation if anybody needs some couple of books. Um, as I said, R is being much so popular nowadays that you can also find a good uh, book on R as well. Awesome. We have uh, Robert and Zar here sort of wrapping things up by uh, yep. suggesting that DataCamp and uh, Lynda.com are other areas that we could look at for yep. learning. And there's yep. a, yep. Robert suggests there's a whole load of free stuff out there like, yep. like you've just said. And I came across yep. the other day, there's Microsoft do, I think they used to call it a Microsoft professional degree in data science, which I think exactly. you can sign up for, can't you? I think they've changed the name of that yep. to a professional program. Yeah, exactly. Program. That's it. And there is an event, I'm not sure, I think it's coming up, the Data Science Summit event is coming up by Microsoft or it has just happened, I'm not really sure it's scheduled October or November or was it September, but it okay. now just, you know, here and there, um, but yeah, um, you know, there are many ways to start, um, as I said, online courses are also so great and so nice and um, 
you can also go to YouTube if you want, or yeah. books online. But <laughs> so it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> or you know, plug in and listen to us on virtual chapter and talk about R. <laughs> exactly. Well, that that uh, that's a really nice segue because um, I, it, that allows me to talk about our our virtual chapter YouTube channel. Which um, what what I will do is this recording once we're finished, we'll we'll um, generate it and upload it to YouTube. So I should be able to get that before the day's over. Um, and I'll post the links on okay. on the SQL Pass hashtag. Um, so I'd just really like to thank you for joining me, Thomas. It's been really enlightening, and uh, hopefully I can convince you to come back sometime. Um, and and we'll be thank in you. touch. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Mark, for having me, and thanks to all the attendees who managed to have 20 minutes of their <laughs> evening time extended listening to us talking about blah, blah, blah. No, joking. <laughs> so thanks to everyone, and thank you, Mark. Awesome.